All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Redneck Rantings. It is Monday, April the 1st, 2019. We got us a brand new rant. And today I'm talking about guns. Um, I want to talk about the uh, recent decision by California-based judge Robert Benitez, uh, when, wherein he overturned California's magazine size restriction. Now, before I get into this, I want to be clear about something, all right? First things first, I am going to actually be demonstrating firearms operation in this video. The other thing, excuse me, drop something. There we go. The other thing is I make no secret of the fact that I typically have alcohol while doing these videos. I'm not this time, okay? I'm sticking straight, strictly to uh, a tasty carbonated beverage because I'm going to be handling a firearm... And if you mix in any way guns and alcohol, you're a fucking imbecile. All right? Don't ever mix guns and alcohol. It's bad. Okay? You're going to have a bad time. Dumb jokes aside, I just wanted to give everybody a heads up. Now, in the course of this demonstration, I'm going to be showing how quick it is, how quick and easy it is to swap out magazines in a semi-automatic in a, in a semi weapon. Okay? Obviously, we want to be safe when we're handling guns, particularly when we've got uh, people we care about in the room with us. So let me be clear. You see that little yellow thing and the red thing underneath it and the yellow thing underneath the red thing? For those of you who don't know your guns, that is called, those are called snap caps. These are dummy plastic inert bullet substitutes, okay? There's no propellant. Uh, there's no firing cap. There's none of the things that turn a bullet into a projectile, okay? This might as well be from like a G.I. Joe set for all of its potential lethality. But even so, we are going to treat the weapon as if it were live when we get to the demonstration part. Right now, I'm just going to tuck my spare magazine in where I normally would keep it if I was going about my lawful business carrying my pistol. Get back to that in a minute. Now, we're going to talk about this California magazine restriction. For those of you who don't know, California had passed a law that said that semi-automatic weapons could not have a magazine which took more than 10 rounds. Now, what is a magazine? A magazine is this thing right here, okay? It's not a clip. It is a magazine. Its purpose is to hold the bullets so that you can reload the gun rapidly. Clip refers to a completely different type of reloading system that we're not going to get into, but basically it's circa World War I. California decided that it was a bad idea to allow people to have magazines that held more than 10 rounds, and they cited these mass shootings that while they are very tragic and very splashy, are actually statistically very, 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 very rare. All right? And this was challenged in court. It was overturned by Judge Robert Benitez. And in his decision, uh, Judge Benitez stated that first off, this was a constitutional violation because the these magazines, these 30-round magazines, or in the case... 30-round magazines, as in the case of rifles, or a, or a somewhat smaller magazine, such as the 17-round magazine that I've currently got in my vest pocket, uh, for a pistol, were common use. They were standard practice, and those are. That's not a high-capacity magazine. In a semi-automatic rifle, a 30-round magazine is a standard magazine. Now, a semi-automatic rifle, for those of you who don't know, is, or a semi-automatic weapon. I know you hear that word automatic. Oh my God, it's a machine gun. No, it isn't. Semi-automatic means you pull the trigger once, one round gets fired, no more rounds get fired until you pull the trigger again. People fix on, fixate on that word automatic and they think it's a, they think it's a Tommy gun or a machine gun that's just going to hose bullets until it runs out as long as your finger's on the trigger. It's not. It means one pull, one bang. All right, they are literally the most common 
classification of firearm worldwide. All right? Cops use them, hunters use them, law-abiding citizens like myself use them to protect their family or to go deer hunting. And Judge Benitez, in his wisdom, said that first off, these were common use items. And as such, it violated the common use, uh, it violated the Constitution in that respect. It also uh, was a safety issue because these guns and these magazines are far, far, far more commonly used in legitimate purposes target shooting, hunting. He very specifically cited two cases of home invasion where women used semi-automatic weapons to defend themselves against a home invader and pointed out that if a woman, or any person for that matter, had run out of, had had a restricted capacity magazine in that circumstance, they would be dead because they would have run out of bullets. The reason they would have gotten into this trouble is because they didn't have anywhere on their person to store an additional magazine, excuse me, or if they did have the means to do so, they didn't have the means to swap out the magazine because the magazine, changing a magazine is a two-handed process, and these people were holding onto their phones trying to keep in touch with 911, help, there's somebody in my house trying to hurt me, okay? You can't very well expect somebody in a life-or-death situation who's on the phone with emergency services to put down the phone. It's not reasonable. Okay? Now, people have said, you know, I've, I've had this conversation with people before, and it always gets back to this bullshit of, well, why do you need, you know, 10 rounds or 15 rounds? Learn to shoot. You know, or they or they, they, they talk about, well, they didn't they didn't need 15 rounds back in the day. I literally had somebody tell me, Wyatt Earp didn't need 15 rounds at the OK Corral. No. But Doc Holliday had two pistols and a shotgun at the OK Corral. Do you know why a lot of these Wild West gunfighters carried two guns? Like the guys who were professional shootists? So the reason for it is because they understood that you want to have as many bullets as possible ready to fire in the event that you need to use a gun to defend yourself. I guarantee you, if you had presented the Earp brothers with a SIG or a Glock or a Beretta like I carry and taught them how to use it and provided them with a ready supply of ammunition, I guarantee you that when they showed up at the OK Corral, they would have not hesitated to use these, to use these modern weapons in place of their six-shooters in that confrontation. Why? Because nobody ever came through the other end of a gunfight and went, man, I really did bring too many bullets to that thing. No. All right? <clears throat> People who want these magazine restrictions and talk about and talk this nonsense about, well, you only need so many rounds. You know, like Typically, I hear you only need six rounds to defend yourself. They've got, they're, they're fixated on this Wild West imagery where back in the day, these guys, you know, they use six shooters. So they think of people defending themselves with guns as, you know, a couple of cowboys standing out in the street at high noon, which, by the way, is bullshit. It only ever happened one time, and it was Wild Bill Hickok, who was a known nutter, standing out there and blazing away with these cold wheel guns. All right? And when I say a wheel gun, I mean, I mean a six shooter or a revolver. But the thing is, is these guys were using the largest capacity weapons available by current technology of the day. They still had access to these single shot muzzle loading pistols because the Civil War wasn't but a couple it wasn't but a few years ago and they could have very easily gotten their hands on a single shot pistol. They didn't. What they did was they got the gun that held the most bullets and they made damn sure it was in working order and a lot of them like I said carried multiple guns because it takes time to reload a six-shooter. It takes time to reload any gun like that. All right? Now, what I'm going to do, and the other argument is that, well, if a mass shooter has 
you know, only has 10 rounds, then it's going to slow them down and somebody is going to be able to intervene and rush them and beat them up. Okay, first off, you idiots need to quit watching so many goddamn action movies and reading so many fucking comic books. This is not Marvel Comics. This is not DC. You're not Batman, and Spider-Man is not going to come swinging through the window to web up the bad guy. This is the real world, and in the real world, if somebody is shooting at you, you either shoot back if you have a gun, or you take cover and you pray to God somebody with a gun shoots at them for you. It's very, very rare for somebody to rush a gunman just because there happens to be a pause in the firing. Because first off, guns are louder than hell. There's a reason why you wear ear protection at the range. Because one shot blows out your ears. Okay, you can't tell that the shooting that the, that the shooting is necessarily stopped because your hearing is is gone. The other thing is is okay, fine. He sh he stopped. Maybe the you don't know why he stopped. Maybe the reason he stopped is he's looking around for targets. You don't want to be the one to pop up, you know, like like a gopher out of his hole. Hi, boom, catch one in the face. All right. Most people are going to hold in place or they're going to try to run away, but they're not going to run at the guy who's mowing down other humans with a weapon. As far as how long it's going to take to change out a magazine in a gun, this is where we get to the demonstrative part of the video. And again, always be extremely safe with, hand, with any gun Treat every gun like it's loaded. This is my personal carry gun. Okay, this is a Beretta PX4 Storm. I have a legal uh, concealed carry por permit for it, issued by the state, issued by my municipality. And anytime any member of law enforcement wants to check and say, "Hey, Bob, is your paperwork in order?" By all means, man. I don't leave the house without my without my uh, paperwork even if I'm leaving it without my gun, which is kind of a rarity, by the way, so please, be nice. Now, normally, when you run out of bullets in a firing scenario, say you're at the range, and you bang, 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 and you shoot all of your targets into the, all of your bullets into the paper target, and hopefully you hit it, the slide, that's this part right here, locks back, thusly announcing, no more bullets, okay? Then, here's how easy it is to change out a magazine. Now watch, it is currently, wait for it, 12 minutes, 50 seconds, and go. You see that? Eight seconds. That's how long it took for me to turn an empty gun into a live, fireable gun. All right, and I was actually fumbling a little bit. My adrenaline wasn't up. I wasn't in a combat situation. I wasn't in an, in an accelerated state. I was simply going off on the internet, demonstrating to people how quick and easy it is. Eight seconds. Assuming that you were, were one of these super heroic types who actually had the balls to rush another human being, who was, like I said, mowing down other people with a gun, and you weren't just, like, laying there in your own piss, which, by the way, <laughs> is a perfectly reasonable response to somebody trying to murder you, okay? The likelihood of you crossing the distance in eight seconds and getting close enough to not get dead and grapple with the guy in eight seconds or less is infinitesimal. Just wanted to get that out of the way. As far as what the judge was talking about with regards to the rarity of these mass shootings. Yes, mass shootings are a horrible, horrific, tragic, nightmarish scenario. They also account for, like, I think it's less than 4% of all gun-related crime in the country in a given year. That is out of a total gun-owning population of an estimated 100 million people with about 300 million guns out on the streets. According to FBI crime statistics, in 2017, I'm just going to click over here real fast. Here we go. Um, in 2017, according to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, 
uh, expanded homicide data table eight, there were a total of 15,129 homicides in the United States in the year 2017, the most recent year we have the data for. There were a total of 10,982 homicides by firearm out of a total estimated privately owned number of about, a, of about 300 million guns in this country. Of those homicides, 403 were committed with rifles, not just with ARs, not just with AKs, every type of rifle in the world that you could possibly conceive of, 403. So everything from Great Grandpappy's single shot break open squirrel gun 22 caliber all the way up to an AR-15 or an AR-10 or some sort of, or, or some civilian knockoff of an AK, okay? AK, okay, all right. Sorry, dumb joke, had to lighten it up a bit. By comparison, <clears throat> in the same year, knives and cutting instruments, 1,591. That means you're roughly four times, you were, Yep, 1,591. That means you are approximately four times more likely to get murdered by a blade than you were by a rifle. Blunt objects, hammers, clubs, etc. I'm quoting directly from the article. 467. So about uh, ba -ba -ba, 20, 30% more. Yeah, about 20% more likely. Personal weapons, hands, fists, feet, etc. 696. You were about one and a half times as likely, one and a half times more likely, to get punched and kicked to death than killed with a rifle. So yes, absolutely. Are mass shootings tragic? Yes. Should we take reasonable steps to prevent them? Hell yes. But realistically, you don't have a great chance of getting caught up in one, all right? Lunatics are not stalking the streets like in The Purge, looking to mow innocent people down. It is a statistically minute event. And realistically, these guns are far and away more used for, sh for target shooting. I personally like to go to, the, go to the target range a couple of times a month. I have a lot of fun. It's very cathartic, very therapeutic. Everybody's very nice there, very polite people there. Hunting. People would say, well, why do you need, you know, 30 bullets to shoot a deer? Well, the word need doesn't appear in the Constitution, all right? You take 30 bullets in because that's what the gun holds. I personally have never needed more than one round to kill a deer, and I've got a couple of hides hanging up, and I've fed my family a couple of winters in a row on deer meat because we were too broke to afford anything else. All right. Um, there's other legitimate per there's other legitimate things like home defense. The examples cited by the judge. There was a case where a guy where, where a bunch of people tried to break into a guy's house in Texas. He held them off with his legally owned AR-15. And the grandfather of one of the people who died said, well, it was an unfair fight. You know, that's bullshit, okay? You want a fair fight, get your ass into the boxing ring. You want to break into somebody's house with weapons and try to rob them and possibly kill them, buddy, you get what you fucking get. And I don't want to hear any of this, why, well, it wasn't a fair fight. Don't break into people's houses and you won't have to worry about a fair fight, okay? It's not rocket science. If a knucklehead like me can figure it out, you can do. What does this mean for the broader scope of things. What it means for the broader scope of things is that these other states that have instituted these magazine bans are now going to be facing serious challenges in court because this sets a precedent. It's one that I personally believe is a very good precedent because it is saying that people have a right to have reasonable to, to, to have the most effective technology available for self-defense and sporting and for hobby and for hobbyists like again target shooting target shooting is a really big hobby hobby in this country you can go to any gun range and you will see leagues or like you know you go to your bowling league or your dart league or 
if you play bridge, there's people who their idea of going and having a league night is not to go bowling, it's to go and shoot 22s or pistols or whatever and see who is the best shot that night. All right? But it's a victory for the law-abiding majority of people in this country who want to own a 30-round magazine semi-automatic rifle simply because it is their right under the law. And so all of these other states are now going to have to look over their shoulders going, when are the gun lawyers going to be coming after us and holding this up as a precedent in court? And I honestly hope the answer is soon, and I hope every single one of these states gets dragged into court because these laws do nothing, nothing whatsoever. Wow, I'm going 20 minutes on this. I'm really on a roll. They do nothing whatsoever to prevent crime. They do nothing whatsoever to keep people safe. In fact, as Judge Robert Benitez pointed out, they do the opposite. All right? If you run out of bullets before the bad guy does, the bad guy wins. How does the bad guy win? You fucking die. That's all the that's all these magazine laws were doing is they were putting the advantage on the side of the field where the bad guy is. They were giving him the edge. Now, I don't know about you. I'm a nice man. I go to work, I do my job, I come home, I pet my 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 dog, I hug my wife. I'm a nice man. I don't want a man who is not a nice person to have the advantage against me and my family or anybody with a gun. If somebody wants to act like a savage with a gun, I want the odds to be as tilted in, in my favor, and you should too, as possible, because in real life, in life or death situations, there's no such thing as a fair fight. There is only who can fight the most unfair. And in that situation, where you are defending your life or the life of some innocent person, you want every edge possible at your disposal. And the real and, and the, the realistic fact is, is that guns do not statistically get used that much in crimes. 300 million, million, 300 million guns in this country. And in 2017, there were less than 16,000 crimes. There, there were less than 16,000 crimes committed with them. All right, let's take a look at this again. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, there, there, there. I'm sorry. There, correction. There were less than 16,000 murders. There were barely 15,000 murders out of a total weapons pool of 300 million. It's not that big of a number. Realistically, and the feds will tell you this if you ask them, realistically, a gun is far and away more likely to get used for defensive purposes than it is in a crime, and when it's used in def for defensive purposes, 99% of the time, what happens is the good guy pulls his gun and says, leave me alone, and the bad guy goes, I have to go change my pants. I made an oopsie in my undies because of that. I don't want to get shot. I'll be over here swapping out my drawers. Bye-bye. Sorry to bother you. Okay? So, this is a victory for the good guys. We won one. And hopefully, this is going to spread to other anti-gun states. And hopefully, if you'll excuse the expression, these unconstitutional laws will get shot down. We need to start enacting laws that give people an incentive not to commit crime. We need to go to these bad guys and say, if you commit a crime while holding a gun, we're going to add additional time. But this bullshit of, well, you can't have more than 10 rounds in your gun, that doesn't save anybody. That makes good people unsafe. I'm starting to repeat myself. It's getting on to dinner time. Y'all be safe. Y'all be well. Peace out. Bye-bye.